Hey y'all, I'm just getting home here, but I want to show you beautiful deer. And I know a lot of y'all have been asking about how's that deer. Uh, my dogs, you know, they, um, I guess you could say attacked a, a baby deer, a fawn that was trapped in my yard not too long ago. So a lot of y'all were asking how that deer is. Um, not sure if that's the deer right there. It could be. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. Um, but I wanted to talk a little bit about prey drive. <laughs> it's gypsy. Ozzy. But let me first introduce you to my pack if you're new to the channel. Hi, Papa. This big one here is Ozzy. He's my 150 pound male, alpha male, Cane Corso. The black one, black female, she's the female, dominant female, three years old, Chef Dolce. Uh, Lucia is uh, the very tall puppy. She's only 11 months old, female. So two female Cane Corsos, one male Cane Corso. Little puppy is Gypsy. She's an American Pit Bull Terrier, four months old. Gypsy girl. And then in the back there is is Tux, and he's a uh, pit bull mix. So there's the pack. Look what I got. Look what I got. Oh, get it, girl. Come on, Oz. Come on, Papa. Come on, Oz. Oh, you got some on your eye. Oh, let me see. Let me see. Let's see. Let's go see. Come on. Hi, Papa. Back over here, Lucia. Let's go this way. <laughs> okay, baby girl. Oh, careful, baby. Okay, baby girl. Let's go this way. Come on, baby. Let's go this way. Come on, come on. Come on, baby girl. I'm oh, sorry, baby. Okay. Ah, I see. But yeah, y'all. Um, kind of course, so. The main thing about kind of corsos um, is, is, you know, they're number one, they're, they're protectors. Hi, baby girl. They are good, very, I mean, excellent protectors, guardians. Uh, you know, they'll protect with their life and defend the property against anything, any kind of a threat. <laughs> um, but, you know, um, the kind of corso goes back into you know the history of it it's one of the oldest breeds and they were bred to defend and and go into battle um in the roman wars come on baby and so that being they um they they also have it in, in their genetics um to attack so that's just part of their their uh, it's just part of how they were bred there's two females right there fighting over the tree toy. Uh, so they also have a high prey drive. So that's all the nature of the beast. They're uh, extremely protective. Hi, Tuxy. Hi, Tux. And uh, extremely high uh, prey drive. Although I think that there's some variation within the breed on, on um, how high the prey drive is. And as far as Mastiff breeds go, I think that uh, the Dogo Argentino, Argentinian Mastiff, it has a little higher prey drive, especially with with cats, because they were bred to, uh, you know, to um, to fight off pumas and large cats. So Corso does have a, a high prey drive, but in comparison to other breeds, um, maybe not so much. Pitbull also has a high prey drive because Pitbull is a terrier. Terrier breeds by nature have a very high prey drive. Dolce! Dolce! The two girls and then the... Well, these are the three girls right here. So, yeah, so just with that kind of um, intro, I wanted to tell you my personal experience here. You saw... Well, okay. I wanted to tell you. Uh, I wanted to tell you several examples of prey drive within both my pit bull and my kind of corsos. Ah, you gypsy girl. What is gypsy? 
Now, Gypsy, being a pure American Pit Bull Terrier, has a very high prey drive already, only at four months. So she uh, she brought in a bird last night okay. around midnight. I was looking for her. I was, um, you know, I, I go to bed late. I go to bed um, midnight, between midnight and 1 or 2, 2 a.m. And she's usually fast asleep by that hour. And when I noticed she was not sleeping in the house, so I, I walked outside to go see where she is. she was and as I was going outside she was coming in prancing so proud she was like uh, just had this proud gait and just prancing and she had a, a bird in her mouth yep she caught a bird either either the bird was sick and she got it or or she caught it I don't know how she caught it uh, but the head was torn off of it and she just had the body of it in her mouth and dropped it at my feet. So proud. And so I'll show you a real quick uh, clip and um, just quick warning. If anybody is squeamish about that or it's gonna bother anybody, you might wanna, you might wanna uh, just not watch the rest of the video because I'm gonna show just a little quick, quick clip of that. So. This little girl, Gypsy, is my four-month-old pit bull. She came in here wag wagging her tail with this in her mouth. Oh, oh, God, oh goodness gracious. It's a bird. if it fell or how in the world she got it poor thing goodness gracious that's a hunter right there gypsy what you get girl Luchina. and she is foaming at the mouth And then, and then Miss Lucia, Lucia, Lucia over there, the 11 month Cane Corso is, um, you know, I can already see has a prey drive. Oh, I see Papacito. Let's see, he's looking for deer. I think he's looking for deer. Uh, and I'll show you a clip of that. That was from this morning. So already two days back to back, I have my pit bull and my kind of course is catching um prey on the property so lucia here uh caught a frog she was prancing around with a frog in her mouth but interestingly she didn't kill it i believe if if uh, the pit bull caught it the the frog would be dead that's just my um opinion but lucia here was more was just playing with it so that's an interesting comparison there Ozzy. Ozzy also, he doesn't seem to kill the prey. He seems to just like catch and hold. That's a term some people use um, that have described a kind of corso of more of a, of a bait and catch or a catch and hold where they just, um, whatever the threat is, they'll, they'll hold it and wait for the, the owner to come, come take care of it. But they'll hold it down and make sure it doesn't go anywhere. Uh, whereas the pit bull, I believe it, it was bred to kill. So, um, interesting. Of course, you know, always going to be variations within that. So, just very generally speaking. She's getting the direction here. Ooh. Yeah, Ozzy's had enough of her energy level. And so, uh, you know, these, these two girls play a lot. So, uh, but yeah, I'll show a quick clip here of the frog. And the frog did not, from what I can tell, did not get hurt. Frog survived, but 
Yeah, interesting because I believe again that probably would would have been dead if the pit bull caught the frog. Cute, cute little frog. Lucia was just playing with it. What do you got? What do you have there, baby? Oh my goodness! Oh, get it! Get it! Get! 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 Oh goodness gracious, y'all! Get out of it! Oh, this poor thing! Oh, it's still alive. Poor thing. It's a frog, baby. It's a frog. Okay, it looks like he's still alive, y'all. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to. Uh, oh, poor thing. I see. That's a frog, honey. Oh, he's cute. And he's sweet. Oh, he's sweet, baby. It seems like she was actually gentle. Lucia was. Lucia was actually gentle when she had uh, it in her mouth. Because I don't see any, I don't see any injury on the frog. Good. No, he's okay. You leave it. You leave it. Oh, yeah. So this is a, yesterday, Gypsy brought in a dead bird. She's ready to play, but I gotta go to work. Anyways, y'all, get to work. Um, and then, hey, Papa. Uh, another example. Now, Tux. Tux is the that black pit bull mix that I showed you. Um, now he also has about sixty-five percent American pit bull terrier in his in his genes in his genetic makeup. I want to say he's probably got the highest prey drive of my adult dogs, it's probably going to be... Hey, Papa. Hey, Papa. It's probably going to be matched with the other, the pit bull, puppy gypsy there. Um, but, yeah, Tux, uh, from, you know, what was it, three or four days ago, I posted the video where he chased down a porcupine and um, got a face full of porcupine needles or por porcupine quills in his muzzle and so yeah anytime that I, I, I think I'm worried the most about the pit bulls when it when it comes to porcupines because they have uh, at least in my pack they have the highest prey drive amongst the kind of corsos Dolce has the highest prey drive she's the most energetic uh, she has attacked a dog that wandered onto my um, my property before I had my fence up. When I first moved in, she attacked the dog uh, at the leg. The leg was bleeding, and then I, I got there and I, and I made her get off of the dog. The dog limped away. But yeah, she's I don't know. It's I, it's a for with, with that situation, it was probably just more um, territory, you know, protection, territorial, and. Um, but I do see her chasing small animals, you know, I, I, I see her chasing lizards and things like that, but definitely not to the degree of these uh, pit bulls, of the pit bulls. Uh, and then lastly, another video that I showed recently, very recently, was there was a, a baby deer, that baby deer that wandered onto my lot. And... Uh, I got to it after the scene, so I'm guessing that the first one to it would have been Tux over there, the pit bull mix, and he kind of keeps to himself out there. He's the Omega of the pack. He kind of, he's my watchdog. He's all, he's the ears, eyes and ears, and he just kind of stays outside a lot. He gets lots of attention for anyone that's concerned about him. He, you know, uh, off camera, I, I give him tons of attention. Uh, and he's the one that had the face full of por porcupines, but... But yeah, so um, he, uh, I'm, I'm guessing he's the first one that, that, that attacked that deer. And then of course the kind of corsos came and held it down. Um, 
so yeah prey drive prey drive is is, uh, is real and it's uh pretty significant you know definitely in definitely in the pit bulls Ooh, i forgot of course one of the most important things i, I almost don't want to tell you this story because it's so sad uh, if you're bothered by these kind of stories, you might not want to watch the rest of this video, but So y'all know my brother Albert if you've been watching the, the channel for any length of time my, my brother Albert he uh, He lives near Houston. Uh, I'm over here in the Texas Hill Country and you know, he comes and visits every so often, but he was married to an ER doctor um, a couple years ago, she uh, was an ER doctor out of uh, Houston, and um, she was a cat lover. She she uh, she had a cat, a couple adult cats, and then she had this cute little orange cat named Pip, because it was like a, a so tiny Pip Squeak. So she named Pip, and she loved Pip so much, and. Uh, and uh, so it was just tiny, it was a rescue kitten. And uh, so my sister and I, we often go to, we fly to Mexico and um, to Cozumel or, you know, any kind of, we love the island, we love any kind of water. So that's usually where we'll fly to. And so we, she and I flew out of Houston and at that time I only had Tux and I think it was just Tux and Ozzy. I don't remember if I had Dolce yet. I definitely didn't have Lucia. So it was just Tux and Ozzy and maybe Dolce at the time. And um, so I drove to Houston and I had asked my brother and his wife at the time to watch the dogs while my sister and I went on our trip. And we flew out of Houston. Well. I called to check on them while I was in Mexico. I said, hey, how's the dogs doing? Everything was fine. He said, everything's fine. Well, then when I when we got to to their house to pick the dogs up after we flew back home, after we flew back into the States, um, I, I met him outside, you know, at his house in the driveway. And the two of them came to greet us and um, his wife was crying. And he said, I didn't want to tell you on the phone because I didn't want to ruin your trip, but uh, Tux killed Pip. Yep. Talking about you, Tux. Yeah, Tux. Uh, so th they had gone to a, one of his baseball games and left the dogs at home. And, uh, and Tux made a beeline for that kitten and, and killed him. And then uh, Tux has also killed, after that we found, you know, he uh, he killed some stray cats that happened upon uh, my dad's property when I was out visiting my dad. My dad lives out in the country and there's uh, lots of stray cats and, and Tux killed a couple of them. So the thing about Tux, he seems very sweet and laid back and everything, but it's that prey drive, y'all. That prey drive. So it's real. Taxi. So I don't take my dad. I don't take Tux anymore ever to my dad's house. There's too many cats. But this is my baby. So yeah, just a little bit on that. Um, Ozzy, come on, Oz. These two girls. So yeah, I just uh, I just wanted to touch upon prey drive because you know everyone when they I talk about and think about kind of corso, you know they talk about all the qualities of the kind of corso and, and the the utility of the kind of corso, you know guardian protection, all that good stuff, and you know how they can become aggressive if not trained properly, if not socialized, all that good stuff. So. I don't know if many people talk about prey drive with the breed. And so I wanted to mention it. And um, and also to note that my experience here is, you know, if you've been watching the channel, I, oh man, she's extremely athletic, man. 
she can keep up with all the adults that um, all of my all of my kind of courses are very well socialized because I was very diligent um, from the day that I got them home I wanted to socialize them as it's recommended to do with the breed you know I take them to Home Depot they're good with kids they're aloof to strangers as they should be and as they're known to be but they're not aggressive when they don't need to be aggressive and so that being said they still have a prey drive uh, and I don't think you can train out a prey drive I don't think you can train that you can kind of control it um, you know but if an animal wanders upon your property like like my examples here the deer that wandered on my property, if I'm not home to tell them to leave that deer, they're gonna kill it, you know? They're gonna try to, at least the pit bulls, uh, the kind of corso I think would rather just catch it and hold it. Might not wanna um, kill it, but yeah, that's just, that's just the nature of the beast. And to be realistic about it. Papa. So yeah, y'all, um, a dog is a dog. And as humans, we can control a lot of that. We can train them. That's the beauty of a dog. You can just like, you know, like we, we use tools to work for us and we use dogs to work with us and for us in, in, a, in, a, in a way that, you know, the way that they've evolved to help us and then we help them. Yeah, Tuxie. His eyes are always on me. Tuxie. Um, hello, Tux. There's two females over there. Man, they're all three of those females are extremely athletic. Ozzy. And so, uh, yeah, that's just uh, a consideration. If you have small cats, you know, um, some people have asked how are how's the kind of corso with cats. Um, okay, you know, if if you train them and, and show them and socialize them to the cat that the, the, the cat's part of your pack um, then they'll they'll leave the in my experience leave it alone I did live with a cat I had a cat that lived to the ripe old age of 20 years old and uh, Ozzy grew up with that cat Tux grew up with that cat never never bothered it um, none of my cats bothered that cat I'm sorry none of my dogs bothered that cat um, so, I have heard that other massive breeds that might be a different story, like the like the Dogo, Argentino, but but yeah, a wild animal kind of all bets are off. Um, yeah, if if a wild animal happens on my property and I'm here, I can call the dogs off of it. But look at her! Look at her! More and more, Dolce has been ramping it up as far as uh, proving her dominance, asserting her dominance on Lucia. Lucia's around her heat cycle, and Dolce's trying to let her know, don't, don't try to come up on my uh, position in the pack. I'm still more dominant than you. So she's constantly trying to prove her point, trying to prove herself. And then the little pit bull puppy gypsy, she's she's doing, you know, she's she's dominant as well, just in her own right, but not too much at the moment. She still will back down. But she's just doing what puppies do, you know. They play in a way that they're trying to establish themselves as well. So it's play with a purpose. It's not just happy-go-lucky play. They're playing with a purpose um, to assert themselves. And to figure out their position in the pack and the hierarchy. That's what they're constantly doing. Luchi! Luchi! Luchi wants to play. Ozzy. Hey, Papa. Ozzy. Hey, Papa. Santo. Dolce. Dolce. Sit. Good. Sit. Good 
it, give it, baby, give it. Ooh, Oz is actually letting her play. Go chase it down. Oh, well, the sun's going down here. <laughs> Chuck's is just wondering when it's feeding time. He's like, are y'all done with your shenanigans yet? Because I'm hungry. I papa. His ears perked up when I said hungry. Are you hungry? Are you hungry? Are you hungry? Okay, Papa. Okay, Papa. Who's hungry? Who's hungry? Come on, Papa. Okay, baby. Well, y'all, hope you're having a good night. And um, I will catch y'all on the next one.